Hi, my name is David Stamler. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Alterity Therapeutics. And I'm really happy uh, to be able to tell you about our company and about our phase two program in MSA. Uh, joining me on the call today uh, is Dr. Daniel Clausen, who is an Associate Professor of Neurology at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Uh, Dr. Clausen has been working with us uh, for the last couple of years um, and has contributed greatly to this development program. And he'll be sharing some very exciting data uh, with you from an ongoing study a little bit later. Uh, before I introduce you to the phase two program itself, I would like to tell you about our company. Uh, Alterity has been around for several years and we are dedicated to creating an alternate future uh, for people living with neurodegenerative diseases. Um, our name itself, um, uh, alterity means the state of being different. And this really ties into what we're trying to do uh, for patients uh, who are uh, living, living with uh, neurodegenerative diseases. Our goal is to modify the course of disease and to really try and um, disrupt the trajectory and improve the quality of life um, for people um, who are experiencing um, these illnesses. Uh, I would like to summarize a little bit uh, our program, our ongoing programs uh, in uh, MSA and in other areas. Um, on this table, the first uh, uh, study is a natural history study that we have been collaborating with Dr. Clausen about. Um, and this is in uh, people with uh, early stage MSA. Um, and this study is really to help us uh, design our phase two study, which we expect to commence um, in the US early next year. Um, the program itself is referred to as ATH434. That's the second line of the table. Um, and we have conducted um, a phase one study uh, in healthy volunteers to help us prepare for the phase two study, um, which we are actively planning um, as we speak. Um, next, uh, we are also exploring the use of ATH434 in Parkinson's disease. And uh, presently we are doing preclinical studies uh, that are supported by the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And our ultimate goal uh, is to conduct a proof of concept study in uh, individuals with Parkinson's disease um, in the future. Finally, uh, we have a very active drug discovery uh, program uh, that is uh, trying to identify new molecules uh, to take into the clinic to treat these diseases. And we have ongoing chemistry work uh, with our, uh, at our laboratories uh, in Australia. Um, and our goal here is to generate uh, new drug candidates uh, to um, also bring into the clinic in the future. And now I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, ATH434 or um, I'll just refer to it as 434. Um, this is a drug candidate that was discovered by alterity scientists, and you can see the chemical structure here um, on the slide. Uh, now, we intend to give this drug as a tablet twice a day, and here you see a picture um, compared to uh, extra strength Tylenol. Um, we've got two different tablet strengths, um, which I think are um, going to be easy to swallow and can be crushed um, or chewed if necessary, if anyone should have swallowing difficulties. Uh, now, we're very proud of a recent publication um, of some, pre some preclinical data in uh, the journal uh, Movement Disorders. Um, and this, is, uh, de this demonstrated that ATH434 could preserve neurons and improve motor function in an animal model of MSA. And these are important data uh, that we use to support uh, clinical development um, in this area. Now, I previously mentioned we have completed phase one and um, in that phase one study in healthy volunteers, uh, we showed that 434 was well tolerated um, and that the most common side effect uh, was headache. Um, we did see a similar safety profile in younger adults and older adults. Um, and we saw that there was no drug effect on blood pressure or on laboratory values. And finally, uh, while I won't go into it in detail, the data on the right side of the slide uh, does show that we were able to deliver drug uh, to the site of action so that it can really uh, target um, a pathology in the brain. Uh, now our strategy 
uh, for targeting MSA is really focused on preserving protein function. And this cartoon here um, is a picture of a protein called alpha-synuclein. Um, alpha-synuclein is an abundant brain protein. Um, it's present in every neuron. Um, and it, what it allows these nerve cells to do is to communicate uh, with one another. So you can imagine um, if this protein doesn't function properly, uh, neuro, uh, nerves can't communicate well with one another and that can lead to impairment. In diseases like MSA and in Parkinson's disease, uh, the, this protein alpha-synuclein aggregates um, and it, it leads to um, many problems. Now, our, our, our research strategy is really summarized on the right side of the slide. What you see uh, um, is normal alpha-synuclein, these, these um, small yellow folded uh, proteins. Um, however, uh, in disease, they can form these small clumps that can then aggregate into these larger clumps. Um, what we're trying to do is really trying to block the aggregation of the alpha-synuclein protein to try and slow down or stop the underlying pathology. And we do this in a novel way. And we, 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 we really prevent this alpha-synuclein uh, from aggregating by targeting excess iron uh, that is present in areas of pathology. Now, I'm now gonna turn uh, the presentation over to uh, Dr. Claussen, who's gonna talk about the role of uh, iron in uh, these diseases and um, how we are um, going to assess it and measure it. Uh, Dr. Claussen. Thank you very much, Dr. Stamler. So um, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. And I've been really um, personally and professionally um, excited to look at this potential avenue of treatment for um, my patients uh, and their families. So. Uh, let's start first with recognizing that iron and neurodegenerative disease, specifically alpha-synuclein diseases, have been uh, linked in, for a long time. Um, if you look at some of the very early studies where actually nanomolar concentrations of iron in parts of the brain have been looked at, we know that in, in Parkinson's disease, for instance, there's tends to be more iron in the substantia nigra, it's part of the brain that makes dopamine. And then when you look at multiple systems atrophy, um, it's clear that a lot of the key areas of the brain that get affected by multiple systems atrophy seem to collect iron. And on these graphs here, you can, you can see that in, in persons that have either Parkinson's disease on the left or multiple systems atrophy on the right, the, the blue bars show that there are higher concentrations of iron in areas that are important to MSA, namely the putamen and globus pallidus, we refer to those uh, together as a lentiform nucleus, as well as the nigra and the and cerebellum. Uh, and, and as Dr. Stamler clicks the next uh, forward, you'll see that some of the innovations that our group has um, worked on uh, and, and, and taken from other um, um, innovations in, in and MR physics is that we can now image iron in patients and actually quantify how much iron is there, uh, not only where it is, but how much is there and link it to symptoms. And so here um, I've got two images. On the left is, an, is a patient that has multiple systems atrophy and the right is a person that doesn't. It's actually, they're, they're uh, aged matched. Uh, so they're the same age, the same gender, but the one on the left has MSA and the one on the right that doesn't. And you can see the red, the hot spots, or that big yellow arrow, that's where the iron is in MSA, and that's the putamen, and also in the, in the more kind of towards the middle, the globus pallidus. And so we're actually able to image iron in patients in real time and get estimates for how much is there and also figure out, well, what does it relate to with symptoms? So we'll go to the next slide. And um, this was really done as part of a biomarkers in early MSA study. And that's where we get the biomuse from. It's a natural history study, meaning we're not using any interventions. We're just looking at how MSA uh, is diagnosed and how it progresses over time. And we've been fortunate to partner with Alterity uh, who's uh, provide, provided the funding for this, this study. And we're um, 
um, really found some amazing and interesting uh, observations that are going to help us uh, as we go forward. So it's observational, meaning that we're not, we don't have an intervention, but we're, we're looking at people over time. Uh, and we're really looking at biomarkers. So these are, these are biomarkers or markers of disease where they, they might be like proteins or they may be imaging outcomes or they may be clinical outcomes. And we wanna look at how these change over time. And we're gonna use this information to decide on what's important as we have a therapy that may improve iron in the brain. And we're gonna examine how these biomarkers and symptoms relate. So we've enrolled patients that have early MSA. So this means a person is, is just been diagnosed or they're very early in the disease course. Um, we typically have a, a year's cutoff. So you have had disease um, no more than four years before, before we see you in clinic. Uh, and the idea is that in the earliest population, you may have the, the best chance of showing benefit before the disease has progressed. And we follow people for 12 months and we do imaging studies, we do biofluids, so that's a fancy word for like taking blood, we take cerebral spinal fluid, um, we do a skin biopsy, we look at protein aggregates under, under the microscope, and we actually have wearable sensors, which basically allow us to quantify how much movement and what kind of movement a patient has over time to see if we could track that over time. And we look at clinical outcomes, so how, how progressed is the patient, how does MSA affect the patient's quality of life, um, how, how substantial are the clinical symptoms that we see. And so this has been a really useful study that uh, has helped us kind of prepare our next steps for uh, using this potential intervention in a clinical population. So I'll, I'll uh, entice you with some, some data. So here uh, we are looking at um, a group of patients that's combined brains that shows where the iron is. And, and, and this is patients that have MSA on the left and patients that have idiopathic Parkinson's disease on the right. And let me just take you through three interesting findings already uh, that, I, that I think will be um, useful as we go forward. The first one is that we have now shown that patients that have early MSA have higher amounts of iron in the lentiform nucleus, namely the putamen and the globus pallidus, we have actually been able to link how much iron a person has to the severity of their clinical symptoms, which is exciting because this has promise to be a, a biomarker um, that can potentially be uh, changed by the, the therapy and hopefully the clinical symptoms will also improve. And we're actually now looking not just at the lentiform nucleus, but at, the, at different parts of the brain and putting together a map of what parts of the brain collect iron and using that map to, to come up with even a better, more um, global region of interest uh, that can be in, impacted by multiple systems atrophy pathology. So when we think about networks of the brain, we know that there's different parts of the brain get affected by MSA, some parts of the cerebellum, some parts of the striatum, uh, and we're able to actually now put, to get, put this all together into one larger MRR region of interest to track how iron changes over time uh, across these uh, networks. So these are very uh, exciting data that, that um, are really helping us propel forward into the next phase of our clinical research. And I'll let Dr. Stamler uh, talk a little bit about the phase two study plan. Great, thank you, Daniel. Um, very nice overview. Um, so as, um, as mentioned, uh, we are in the planning process for our phase two study, uh, and we are targeting uh, 60 uh, individuals with early MSA, uh, and we are planning to randomize or uh, randomly allocate them to one of three treatment groups in the study. Uh, one is a higher dose of 434, one is a lower dose of 434 or placebo, um, and we will be uh, um, planning for 12 months treatment uh, in, for participants in the study. Um, the key objectives uh, for the study are um, very much aligned with what uh, Dr. Claussen just mentioned, which is, um, you know, we're looking at assessing the safety um, and the efficacy of 434 uh, in 
uh, individuals with early MSA. And um, one of the key markers we're really looking at is how 434 uh, affects the brain iron uh, in uh, these areas of pathology. And we are looking at several other markers of MSA pathology. And um, just to, to comment on this is that one of the beauties of doing this natural history study is that as we, even though we are starting our phase two study um, very soon, the natural history study will continue to go on uh, so that if we do learn additional things from uh, that natural history study, um, then we can uh, you know, make any adjustments to this uh, phase two study um, as well. So it's a very exciting program. And uh, I think uh, I wanted to underscore uh, what Dr. Claussen mentioned, which is uh, we've learned a tremendous amount from uh, the Biomuse natural history study. And uh, we hope uh, that, uh, um, that we will continue to do so. So this concludes our, um, our summary of uh, the program in MSA with Alterity. Uh, just to remind you for those in the US, we do expect uh, to begin um, enrollment um, in the US in the early part of uh, next year. And uh, we uh, look forward to updating you on our progress um, over time. Uh, thank you very much.